0% royalties. Most project founders are outraged. The space is shifting right under our feet as we speak. Most NFT projects are going to fail. However, in this chaos, I see opportunity. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you two reasons why this new meta we are faced with, the 0% royalty meta, could be the biggest opportunity for us as NFT project founders and builders in the space. If you haven't heard, Magic Eden, the number one marketplace in the entire Solana ecosystem, has recently introduced 0% creator royalties. So what does that mean? That means that NFT collections no longer are able to collect royalties on secondary sales of their collection. Therefore, all of a sudden, choking these projects and removing one of the main sources of income that these projects used to have. And the reason why Magic Eden did this is very simple. They were losing market share to their competition. For most of Solana NFT history, Solana used to be the number one NFT marketplace for the ecosystem with over 90% of the share of the market. However, over the last couple months, Magic Eden has slowly started losing market share to competition. And a big reason why those competing marketplaces started gaining traction and chipping away market shares from Magic Eden was because those platforms allow 0% royalties. So logically, Magic Eden had to adapt to this and had to shock the world by removing creator royalties from the entire ecosystem. So that means that us, just like Magic Eden, are now faced with two options. We either have to adapt to this new meta or we have to die. And if you're watching this video, that means that you, like me, don't only want to adapt to the space, you want to thrive in it and you want to build the future of Web3. And I'm here to tell you today that in a time when the market is shifting so quickly, there's a big opportunity for us, project founders, to be able to adapt quickly, make the most out of this changing tide use that to our advantage, gain momentum, and really position ourselves as some of the best projects in the space. And we're going to be getting into those two reasons right away. But before we do, if this is the first time we meet, my name is Leon Aboud, I'm the founder of Unfungible.xyz, an NFT strategic consulting and marketing agency aimed at helping NFT projects and brands develop their marketing strategies while entering Web3. So if after watching this video, you still have any questions to me regarding NFT marketing, then feel free to book a free 30 minute consultation call with me or my team by clicking on the link in the description of this video so you can learn how we can help you, how we can help your project and how you can get involved with us. So this brings me to opportunity number one. Why is the Zero Meta good for you as an NFT project founder? I speak with over 20 different project founders a week and I've started to notice a trend. A lot of those project founders were on the fence. They weren't sure if they should be on Ethereum or Solana and they were on the fence and the data that is out there would convince them to go on Solana. But now, all of a sudden, I'm seeing a lot of resistance for NFT project founders to go on Solana. And all of a sudden, they all want to go on Ethereum. So what's going to happen is that a lot of NFT project founders that still have not realized that royalties is actually not the main source of income and still want to get that you know, 5% royalty, they're going to go on Ethereum because that's what they think is best for the business. And what they don't realize, that Solana, as of today, October 2022, remains the number one space to launch and mint your NFT collection. As we speak, I am on DAP radar and we can see that in the last seven days on Magic Eden, which is still the number one platform in this ecosystem, had 4 million transactions with 159,000 active wallets. Now, if you were to go and look at the same data for OpenSea, so OpenSea right here, in the same time frame, so the last seven days, OpenSea has received 271,000 transactions and 88,000 unique active wallets. That means that when we compare Magic Eden to OpenSea, so Solana versus Ethereum, Solana is getting 20 times more transactions than Ethereum and has two times more unique active wallets than Ethereum. And I do want to point out that a lot of you are going to look at the volume here, so that Solana had 18 million in volume while ETH had 43 million volume. Yes, there is more volume on Ethereum, but go look on OpenSea. When we go to OpenSea and we go to collection stats, we're going to see a very quick observation is we're going to see that the top 30 collections are sucking the majority of the volume. And all those collections, all of them are blue 
chip projects, but very little new projects that recently came out. So yes, OpenSea might have three times more volume than Magic Eden. And a very small percentage of that liquidity is going towards new projects that recently minted. Let's take a hypothetical example. You have 100,000 NFT buyers on Solana, and you have 1,000 projects that are minting or marketing at any given time. So that is a thousand projects that are fighting for the attention of 100,000 buyers. So every 100 buyers, there's one project. Now, what happens? Let's say 50% of those projects that were marketing or launching on Solana decide that they no longer want to be on Solana because of 0% royalties and they want to go on Ethereum. The people that are buying, the 100,000 people that are buying on Solana are still there. These guys are not going anywhere. They're happy where they are. So all of a sudden, you have 100,000 people and 500 projects. Therefore, you have twice as little competition as you used to on Solana. Do you get it? So less competition means that you have more chances to differentiate yourself and present yourself as an NFT project founder that is deserving of people's attention. And this brings us to the second opportunity, how the 0% meta could be a big opportunity for us as NFT project founders, marketers, and builders. Moving forward, NFT buyers have understood that collections no longer can sustain themselves on royalties. So the requirements of what NFT buyers will start looking for in projects that they are thinking of investing in has changed. All of a sudden, buyers are less interested in NFT collections and have become more interested in businesses that showcase signals that they are going to be capable of building a business and building revenue streams outside of royalties. Now, as we've spoken before, regardless if royalties were here or not, this should have always been the goal of your collection, finding alternative streams to create revenue for your business, because NFT projects are nothing more than a business, and royalties were never really a reliable source of revenue. But before, NFT buyers didn't really pay attention to that, but now they do. This opens an opportunity for us to present ourselves to those NFT buyers and to that community as a project that now checks all the marks that these people are looking for. When you're going on a date, regardless if you're a man or a woman, there are specific characteristics that you want to showcase in your character. You know, you want to show that you're polite, you want to show that you're generous, that you're nice, you might be smart or funny, and those are all traits that you want to showcase because you know those are traits that the other person is looking for. And same thing has always happened with NFT buyers. They want to see signs that your project has signs of vitality beyond the mint. They want to see that you are intended on building a legit business. And they want to see signs of a dependable and qualified founding team that is launching the project. So now in a world where most NFT projects do not showcase those three characteristics, longevity, long-term profitability, and a qualified team, so when you come in and communicate those traits, it's going to set you apart from the other 99% of collections out there. And the easiest way to showcase that is through your communication, is through the way you communicate with your community on Discord, on Twitter, and most importantly, something I haven't seen a lot of projects do is via a white paper. I think moving forward, any legit project is going to need a white paper. And we've seen a lot of great projects out there pop because of the quality of their white paper. I've recently seen this project called Art Gobblers who are minting on the 31st of this month, so in a couple of weeks, which I do not have an affiliation with. They've gained the attention of the community because of the white paper they came up with. If you notice, they built a very comprehensive and in-depth white paper that details exactly what are they building, what is the ecosystem of, that they're building, and how what they have, the NFT project, is not simply an NFT project for the PFP, it is more than that. It is a business that they're building. And they are inviting people to become part of their ecosystem by investing in that NFT. And although this project is founded by some pretty big people in this name, what got the attention of the community was the white paper. And if we were to go there and we look at the general structure of how they made it, and I'm going to be putting a link to that if you want to refer to it, we're going to see that they've broken down the white paper into four stages. The introduction with a brief overview of the project, the art, so what, does, what is the design, why, why does it look the way it does, and that is the part that got the community's attention because they have went so in depth into it that they detail exactly how their tokenomics work and how they're building basically a new auction mechanism. And in a nutshell, they're building a variable mint technology that hasn't been seen before in the ecosystem. 
And it's pretty straightforward when you think about it, where the mint, the smart contract of the project is automatically going to adjust the price of the NFT to the supply and demand. So let's say they are selling more NFTs than what is scheduled for that one day. The price of the NFT is going to be increasing. Let's say the next day there is less demand than what is target. The price of the NFT is going to go down. And that is so that the mint rate, the mint speed stays within schedule and they don't mint out too fast or too slowly. It's pretty straightforward. And really having them detail so in depth what they're building shows us those three signals that we want to now look for in projects. Longevity, they're here to stay. The fact that they have a long-term roadmap, they're not going anywhere anytime soon. Number two, long-term profitability. So the ecosystem that they're building is meant to derive value to the company. It was designed to be profitable for the business and people can see that. And number three, the fact that the team could pull off something like that shows that they are qualified for the job. And that is really what I want you to take out from today's video. The space is shifting and we have to adapt to it. This creates less competition for us as NFT project founders and will allow us to stand out in a market that, is now, that has now become less noisy. Number two, what NFT buyers look for has changed. And us being able to satisfy their hunger, their thirst for that type of project, creates an opportunity for us to present ourselves and appeal to our eyes. And if you're still unsure which chain is right for your project, is it ETH, is it Solana, or is it another chain? I've made a comprehensive video that really details that and is going to equip you with all the knowledge to help you move forward with your NFT project. So make sure to watch that somewhere here on this video. I will be seeing you in the very next video. Take care.